Hey everyone, my name is Mike Sipos and I'm the UFIFIS Extension Florida Sea Grant Agent in Collier County. And today I'm going to fillet a fish that is really fun to catch, really fun to fight. They're tasty, uh, sometimes controversial to keep because they're really valued with the recreational and charter sector, the permit. So if you want to read the description below, I include plenty of information that I can't touch upon in the video because there's not enough time for that. And if you could please, please, please take the survey linked in the description uh, and tell us how we did, what we could do differently. That really helps me justify my personal time going out there and capturing these fish for you guys and then my work time to make these videos and researching them and uh, share the information with y'all. So uh, please watch the video, take the survey link, read the description, and I'm going to go ahead and move the camera a little bit closer so you can get a better look at my hands as we're filleting this species and uh, pepper in some fun facts about the permit. So uh, I'll go ahead and move the camera and we'll get started. Okay, so let's get started. So to give you an idea of scale, this permit here is about 22 and 3 eighths inch measured fork length. So that's from the nose to this portion of the tail. And that's the typical measurement that they use for regulations for this species. And then 26 and a quarter inches from nose to the tip of the tail. But they don't really use that in the species that really have this pronounced fork. Because um, that doesn't really move while well, you can sort of manipulate the measurement with that that pinch tail So it's gonna probably look super shiny. I actually saw the preview of this video on my phone um, But that's just the the Sun reflecting off this fish. It's a rainy day out there. So it's acting like a mirror almost um, So this fish is also about four uh, eight point four pounds to give you an idea of like scale for that so this uh, the permit is uh, the the scientific name for him is Trachinotis falcatus and that roughly translates to, in Greek, the, the, the genus Trachinotis is, means rough back. And that correlates to these little dorsal spines that you see here. And that's a good way of uh, identifying this fish properly over maybe another kind of jack species that you see, like the Crevel jack. Um, and then Falcatus actually stands for, uh, it's in Latin, is armed with scythes. So these really long sickle kind of fins look like scythes but it's funny because there is a, a cousin of this fish called the palometa and they have even really long sickles so this uh, this species of uh, pompano they're actually in um, the pompano genus of trachinotis so you might have heard of African pompano before and sometimes you can you know common name mistake them but those are actually in a different genus so the trachinotis is the true pompanos there's about 21 species of that and the, within that, that, that uh, the genus, it fits in the Carangidae family, which is the jacks, uh, the scads, the runners, like the amberjack that you might see, like the blue runners. And that's about 140 to 150 species. Um, so the, the world record for this fish, that this is actually a pretty small individual, is uh, 60 pounds, zero ounces, caught in Brazil in 2002. And then the Florida record for the permit is uh, 56 pounds, two ounces, caught in 1997 in Fort Lauderdale. So this fish can easily be mistaken for the, the Florida pompano. Uh, however, the Florida pompano doesn't nearly get as large as uh, the permit fish. So the Florida pompano, I think maxes out world record was about eight pounds, which is about this size of a fish. But anything over that will most likely be a permit if you're catching them in Florida waters. There, you know, like I said, there's about that 21 other species of these true pompanos or permits that fit in there. Um, but they, they could be distributed throughout the, 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 the world. Uh, the range for this fish is from Massachusetts to Brazil, which is the typical range that you might hear for like the Western Atlantic fishes. Um, however, you find a lot of them in these South Florida waters where they could get mistaken for the Florida pompano, like I mentioned. But the Florida pompano um, sometimes can be a little bit more drab kind of color. They could be super silver if you catch them on the beach. Uh, sometimes they'll have more pronounced yellowing around here. But the big telltale factor is that the, the anal fin of that, the Florida pompano, this fin right here is a little bit further back. It's not really on the same plane as these permit. But as these permit grow, they're sort of more circular and smaller shape, uh, similar to the Florida pompano, and they'll sort of stretch out as they grow. Um, the minimum size limit for these fish are both the same, the Florida pompano and the permit, because they look so similar. Uh, coloration, like I said, is a good indicator. Size, if you get anything over about that 10 pound range, it's most likely going to be a permit. Um, you know, looking at these spines, if you're looking, comparing this fish to maybe if you saw a Crevel jack out there, um, they don't have these 
just sort of naked kind of dorsal spines here. They'll have a little a first dorsal fin here. Um, then there's also the African pompano, which isn't actually a pompano at all, but it's in that same Carangidae family. And they have, uh, they don't have these, 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 these rough back, that trachinotis kind of telltale mark. Um, and then they'll have scoots on the, the, the caudal peduncle. So this part of the tail is called the caudal peduncle. Pompanos, um, which is trachinotis, they'll, they'll be smooth here. But if you see a crevel jack or a blue runner or those African pompanos, they'll actually have these little bony projections coming off of here. So that's a good way to tell if you're confused with, between those two species. Um, let me see what else. Crevel jack sometimes will have this uh, black splotch right here by the preoperculum and the perculum area. Um, so do blue runners, I believe, but uh, the pompanos, the permit, and the uh, Florida pompano do not have that. But we'll, we'll keep on uh, going and fillet this fish, and I might <laughs> think of some more facts along the way. So let's go ahead and start filleting them. Um, they're a pretty easy fish to fillet, except for the skinning process, which could be a pain in the butt because uh, their skin and their scales are slight, like really reduced and it, you could cut through them really fa uh, easily. So uh, I'm going to give you a tip on how to do that, but practice makes perfect. You might uh, mess up a couple times on that, but maybe after your first, uh, fourth or fifth pompano or permit, you might be able to uh, skin them. Uh, without getting too much red or get too much of that that silver on them and hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate that so there's a lot of head meat in these fish so instead of just you know starting right here where a lot of people would make initial cut I like to make uh, a cut all the way up to as far as I can go in the head and you can sort of feel around with your finger where it gets um, you know harder where you can't be able to cut through so use that dorsal spine and fin as a guide and cut upwards All the way, there you go. And then cut downwards. And we're going. They also have pretty thick ribs um, that you can cut through, but some people cut around. Just depends on how strong of a knife you have. Uh, like I said, you wanna really have that really sharp knife to, to get this skin off really nicely. Sometimes maybe you could even pull it off like a mahi-mahi. Let's go ahead and make that other cut. So I've cut, oh, I cut all the way up to here. I'm gonna try to feel where that stops. I'm gonna make that cut over here. Okay, so I feel that gill plate gonna cut on down. Yeah, that's good there. I'm gonna start cutting it this way. And I'm gonna start lifting up that fillet and skimming the backbone. Sometimes if you have multiple knives, if you're planning on cutting through the ribs, that could really work out for your favor. Um, or if you want to have one that you can like use to skin, because uh, you might dull your knife by hitting some bones in the, in the process. You could always check your knife edge to see if there's any sort of rolls or burls on that knife, uh, and then you know sharpen it as, need, as needed. So I'm lift this up and do some skimming. So this is a little permit here. Uh, the permits uh, throughout Florida, they, could, they can live in a, a lot of different areas. You know, they're, they're really common in the Florida Keys and the Bahamas where they're on, found on flats. Um, for us in the Southwest Florida area, you're finding most of the juvenile permits in the flats area. You're not really finding the big ones that can get, like I said, that 60 pound range, which is pretty rare. But you know, getting a permit in like the mid 20 pound range is pretty common in a lot of places in Florida. Um, for us in Collier County, you'll find those more so on uh, reefs and wrecks, um, more so than you know in the bays and estuaries. So I'm lifting up the fillet, sort of cutting, cutting. So these are a pretty fast-growing fish. I read a study in 2002. They said they estimated that f about 50% of males become mature at about 2.3 years of age in 19 inches total length. And then females at 3.18 years old and uh, 21 and a half inches uh, total length. That was 50% maturity. And uh, in that same study, they aged, uh, they had a sex ratio of 308 fish. And interestingly enough, it was almost one to one um, males and females. So I'm lifting up that fillet. Uh, 
Okay, so I got that one filet here. Really nice, pretty meat. And put that off to the side and do the other, other side. These ribs, like I said, are really thick. They're really hard to cut through. If you had a serrated knife, you could, but it's, since they're so thick that they're easy to sort of cut over. So the oldest fish that I saw from FWC that was aged was uh, about 13 years old, but there's data that suggests that they could get up to 23 years of age. Uh, in that same paper where they're talking about uh, sexual maturity of fish, they aged 251 fish that I saw, like the male and female ratios, and o only about nine of them were over the age of 15. Um, most of them were under the age of 10, so they're, they're fast growing. Um, they can spawn year round in some areas, uh, but it's believed to be uh, their, their peak spawning time in uh, late spring to early summer time. And in some areas of Florida, there's uh, areas that are protected and you can't harvest those fish during that time. And that's uh, the special permit zone, the SPZ. So that special permit zone occurs from Cape Florida on the east coast all the way through the Keys uh, to Cape Sable area. And permit are closed from April 1st to July 31st there. So I did the same thing I did on the other side, lifting and cutting, lifting and cutting. So there needs to be a little bit more information on uh, you know, how these fish spawn. I've seen some uh, anecdotal evidence and papers out there from Belize that you know, they, they form these large spawning aggregations offshore. And then uh, like five to 10 fish will break off from the group. Uh, there'll be a one larger individual with some smaller individuals following it. And then they'll, they'll, they'll release their gametes, their eggs and sperm. And this usually occurs uh, in the summer months time and close to sunset. There used to be a pretty big commercial industry for permit, but uh, a lot of recreational, uh, the regulations went out there to you know, help save the sustainability of this fish. Um, so back in 1991, I believe, like about 200,000 pounds of permit was landed um, annually. And uh, now it's only about 12, 15,000 pounds, and you can find all that information online. So this is our filleted permit carcass. I'm going to go ahead and skin it. Hopefully I uh, don't get some of this soft skin on there. So I'm going to put this off to the side and give you a tip on uh, how I do sort of wider body fish. So if you can see, it's barely going through the, like all of the fillet. Like that, that's very hard to pull through. So a lot of times with these kind of fish, I like to split the fillet in half using that bloodline as like an indicator. So I'll use that pull down. Now I have a top portion and a bottom portion. It's easier to run your knife through that, that area and that area rather than the whole area, which provides a lot of resistance, uh, more, more room for error. And then it gives you a l good little handhold that you can put your hand in there. Sometimes people will poke a little hole um, to put their finger through and be able to hold that. So uh, also in that, in, in, in one study I read, there was a permit that was aged to 23 years old. But that's a, a pretty rare fish out there. So I, I put the, the fillet towards the end of the table and I'm hovering uh, my knife maybe about two or three millimeters above that skin area. I'm trying to, I'm doing like a pulling and sawing motion and uh, I, I brought it to the edge so the knife handle can hang off a little bit and uh, not knock the table as I'm, I'm doing that. So it allows me to get my knife edge flush. Pulling, sawing, pulling, sawing. So here we go. There's one nice fillet. I'll trim it up in a little bit. Now for that bottom portion. So permit are primarily uh, invertebrate eaters. They have, they call them sometimes rubber lips. So they have these really, really thick lips that they use to root around in the sand searching for uh, mollusks like bivalves, uh, I know bivalve sounds hard, like clams, um, gastropods like snails, crabs, um, different kind of marine worms. So they do that. They also have these really big eyes and a lot of people will target permit by freelining a crab on uh, wrecks. And you can catch them in different areas throughout Florida. You know, some people will catch them in the surf. Uh, in Collier County and Southwest Florida, if you're catching a permit in the surf, it's probably going to be one that is easily mistaken for African or for a pompano in size. So it'll be a little bit smaller there. So that's one fillet here. 
But uh, elsewhere, if you're on the East Coast, uh, there's, there's, I've seen quite a few large permit caught from the beach. And since they're so valuable for the recreational and uh, the charter sector, you know, you make sure that you're handling that permit with care. Uh, try to reduce fight times. Um, try to reduce handling times. Um, if you can, you know, release it while it's still in the water. Um, yeah. <laughs> Use knotless nets because their skin is very soft. Use circle hooks so they don't get gut hooked. All those are great tips. I'm doing that sawing, pulling motion, sawing, pulling motion. Hovering my knife above the skin. Pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. There we go. Another portion. So there's these ribs in here that we still need to um, trim up afterwards. Pull, 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 pull. So there's uh, data out there that indicates that these are batch spawners. They don't just spawn once per season. Like I said, they could spawn year round uh, and they might spawn. But the, the peak is that early spring or late spring to summertime. But that can change with the range that this fish is located. And like I said, the typical Western Atlantic fish distribution that it, you read in dis, uh, papers is from Massachusetts to Brazil. Um, but <laughs> that, that's a really long range, a lot of different climates out there. So I'm going ahead and trimming all this red portion off. Uh, it's the bloodline area. Has a little bit stronger of a flavor. You could eat it though. And sometimes you'll feel like, uh, like ribs in that stomach portion. So you can either pop those out, cut them out of the filet. I like eating permits, so I like to get as much meat as possible from them. That's one bottom portion, looks delicious. And I am going to trim up this portion. So, bloodline area, there's ribs. Feel around with your fingers for the ribs. Um, you know, they usually extend about three or four inches in the fillet, depending on what species of fish you're filleting. Cutting that portion off. Put it in here. So, these fish, uh, they can be found solitarily. Um, or they could find, be found schooling. I often see them schooling on uh, wrecks in this area. You could find small ones in the surf zone, uh, schooling around mixed in with uh, pompano sometimes. Sometimes when you're cast netting bait, you'll catch them during certain portions of the year. Um, like I said, you know, they're, they're, they're pelagic spawners. They, they um, broadcast their eggs in the water column, which float around. They hatch usually within about 24 hours. And I've read papers that indicate either 15 to 20 days or 20 to 30 days where these larvae will float in the ocean current and either find their habitat, their juvenile habitat in seagrass beds, um, sort of on the surf zone of areas eating like mole crabs and coquina clams and everything. And then they'll move further offshore, uh, making these spawning aggregations, especially during that summertime weather. So here we have it. These are really trimmed up nicely, nicely done permit fillets. And if you could please uh, watch the, read the description, I'll include plenty of information out there, including sustainability information about this species since they're, you know, so highly regarded for the recreational and charter angler sector. And um, if you could please take the survey linked in the description below, let us know how we did. Um, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, thanks for watching, guys.